I'm going to show you Chord Palette, which is this device I made. It's an Ableton MIDI transform device. These are new types of devices that live inside the piano roll that you can make with Max. And I've made this one called Chord Palette. What it does is it turns any single note or notes that you've got selected into any one of these chords. And you can, there's a whole menu of them and it will turn it into that chord when you press that button. So I've got that C note there and I press that button and it's made a major six nine. There are nine pages of chords. Really the pages are just more room for you to have the chords that you like. So you can set up the pages however you want. When you close the plugin, it should save the pages. And when you go back to chord palette, it should remember the chords there. And there's this invert function, which on this latest version is on the front page. If I, let's just start again and just get that chord and press this, but then cycle through the different inversions. And keep in mind that certain chords when they're inverted may actually end up being other chords. So the chord name is always a guide, especially because you can have scale mode on and you can make all the notes snap to the scale. And I can show you that a bit later. Let's just look at getting around chord palette. If you go into the menu, you can change the view on the front page. And I had to do it like this because you really don't have much space in these MIDI transformation devices. There's just a small little window for you to build what you've got. Maybe that'll change in the future and you can expand it. Or maybe I'm totally missing something, but as far as I can tell, that's kind of how it works. The menu is a bit of a compromise in that sense. I'd like to have this view thing, you know, on the main page, but there's just no room. We can look at the notes of each chord and you can actually edit them. When you do that, it'll make it a user chord. So maybe I can make that a three instead, which is like three semitones. That's what all these kind of numbers refer to is like just raw semitones in the chord. Okay, we can see that's made a user chord. And now if I apply that, I'll just reset the inversion. It's actually going to update this chord because if it detects multiple notes at roughly the same position, it'll find the lowest note and assume that's the root and apply the chord to that. I don't even need to just put a single note. I can just move, just highlight a bunch of notes and move in and it will automatically apply that user chord. Under more, there's not much at the moment, but it gives me some room to put some other things later. Currently you'll find this aux control, OCTS. I'm going to make this a major seven chord. Go back here and move the alt control for that chord and you'll see what it does. Just sort of adds octaves on top. And then once it gets to the end of the notes in the chords, it jumps the next octave. It's not too sophisticated. I'd like to work on this one a bit over time, make it much closer to the inv control and how that one works. If I go the other way, for example, so let's go into negative, works for a little bit then it starts getting a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, it might still sound cool, I don't know. But it's not exactly sensible. I could have just locked this control to not do negatives, but I sort of just left it in there, just, I don't know, in case you stumble across something. But yeah, that's one I hope to fix up in the future. So you can also see this drum control here, which there is a strum transform device, but if you want to use it, you'd have to keep switching back and forth. So I put one in here. It's a little bit more simple in some ways, but it does have this jitter control that lets you do sort of like randomness, which, you know, you could use humanization to do that, but it just means it's all in one place. You can also jitter the velocity of each note. You can see how they're getting more and more apart. And I might think about changing that control a bit in the future to actually affect this deviation amount here, which is like more of a built-in note velocity jitter thing. Maybe that would be more useful. But anyway, let's look at auto. This is a bit of an experimental feature. Basically the idea is I'm just going to click and it's going to place the chord there. I'll turn strum off just to make that a bit easier. And it's just based on the last selected chord. If I go over here and change it to diminished. Now, every time I click, it'll be diminished. I could also turn scale on and that will make any future notes snap to the scale. And maybe I'll just clear everything just to make it a bit easier. And I'll show you how that works. I'm sure you can already imagine what it does. So you can see, uh, usually a C major seven wouldn't have those notes. And every now and then when you snap it to a scale, you might end up with two notes that are exactly the same. So if you see your chord go from four notes to three notes, that's because in that 
snapping process, two of the notes were the same. So one of them just gets deleted. It's the way it works now. If you have any suggestions for how it should work in that sense, let me know. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's chord palette. I guess last thing I'll say, so if you're having trouble installing it, what you need to do is place it where your other Max transform devices are or in a Max search path. So if you go into Max's file preferences, you can add search paths because I actually have my chord palette file outside of that transform directory and Ableton's able to find it. So yeah, check the text file that comes with the download for those installation instructions. Just make sure you extract the zip file as well, in case that's not obvious. And um, if you're still stuck, look at the Ableton manual and see if it tells you where to put them. So yeah, Chord Palette, check it out. It's free, but I really appreciate it if you buy the supporter pack, which gives you a bunch of samples from some of my hardware synthesizers and drum hits processed with pedals, things that hopefully you like. And yeah, please also like this video and subscribe if you want to keep in touch with what I'm doing. Really appreciate it. Thanks for all the support and all the comments, everyone. Enjoy Chord Palette, and I look forward to sharing more stuff with you in the future.